And now it's time for doing our best. Every month, we invite someone up on the stage to share a story with how they're doing their best to be the kind of person they want to be. Most of you already know Ian Dodd, and if you don't, you're about to learn a little bit about him. And uh, Ian, come on up and share with us. Thank you. About five or six years ago, I got one of those, <coughs> excuse me, I got one of those phone calls that we all dread. It was from the hospital in my hometown. My mom, who was in her mid-80s at the time, had collapsed and when her heart stopped. So somebody started applying CPR and somebody else ran to call 911. By the time the paramedics arrived, her brain had been starved of oxygen for several minutes. What the paramedics didn't know was that she had a do not resuscitate order in the glove box of her car. So they immediately took over resuscitation efforts, they rushed her to the hospital, and they put her on life support until they could get a hold of my dad. Now my parents had had these kinds of conversations over the years, and they were very clear that they were not interested in this sort of medical intervention. So I'm sure it wasn't easy, but my dad didn't hesitate when he gave the doctor's orders to take her off of life support. And I talked to the nursing staff and I just said, I want to make sure she's comfortable and we're going to let nature take its course. Don't worry, she made a complete recovery. She woke up the next morning completely with it. Some people would call it a miracle, I call it a statistical anomaly. <laughs> anyway, she's 91 now and has been living <laughs> for the last three years she's been in an assisted living facility and for the last year of that she's been on the memory care unit where all the residents suffer from some degree of dementia. Most of the residents spend their days watching reruns of bad 60s television. And the staff have to keep a close eye on them because with the inoffensive monochromatic, monochromatic paint scheme, it's pretty easy to get lost in the place. So yeah, it's as depressing as I make it sound. There's a little table by the elevator where they put pictures and notes of remembrance about residents who have passed away. I guess it gives them a sort of constantly updating decor. <laughs> Sorry, black, black humor. Anyway, uh, so Margo and I went to visit her over Labor Day last month, and we had to go with her to the annual visit to her cardiologist. He had said he needed a family member there because it was time to make some decisions. When she died the first time, she got a pacemaker put in, and the service life of the battery that, that powers that pacemaker is coming to the end of its expected life. So we had to talk about the options. Well, fortunately, we had information about this from months previously, so we'd had a chance to have these conversations over the course of the summer. And so despite her dementia and sort of the way she reweaves reality with every conversation, there's one thing my mom's really clear about, which is that life has gone on too long and she wants out. Now she would never have the courage to take her own life, but here was an option. Let the battery die and she dies too. So we told that to her cardiologist and he was completely sympathetic uh, completely supportive, didn't try to argue her out of it, and he said, great, well then let's talk about what the future looks like. And he kind of laid out the time frame for the next few months, what she can expect, and he told us that in his best estimate, this battery might last six to nine months, maybe a year at the outside. And then at the very end, he made what I thought was a really extraordinary offer. He said, look, if life ever gets so unbearable and so difficult, I can turn this thing off with a few keystrokes over a Wi-Fi network. So <clears throat> part of living better is dying better, and part of helping often is helping others. So I guess for us, doing our best over the next few months is helping my mom make this transition out of life. It means being in touch with her a little more closely uh, with phone calls every day. It means renting an Airbnb in my hometown so that we can all have one last Thanksgiving together. And it means if she decides to take her doctor up on that final option that we're there to support her in that. So like I said, um, part of living better is, is dying better and part of helping often is helping others to die better too. Thank you.